Hi, I'm Andy Fisher from Dolby Laboratories, and I have with me Stuart Bowling from our cinema group. And before we get started, Stuart, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do at Dolby? Okay, uh, my name is Stuart Bowling. I'm Worldwide Technical Marketing Manager for the cinema group. So my role is to help evangelize new Dolby technologies and act as an intermediary between Dolby Studios, uh, production companies, console manufacturers, exhibition and distribution so that whenever we introduce anything new that we make sure everything is covered and everything goes through smoothly. <laughs> Fun. Um, so Megamind is releasing on Dolby True HD Blu-ray yep. this week. Very so excited. what else is exciting about that title? So Megamind is the first 7.1 release that we were involved with theatrically uh, and it's made its way right through to using Dolby technology on Blu-ray. So Megamind came out 7.1 in theaters and the same mix and the intent of the content creator was reused. Um, so that same content and the way you heard it and experienced it in the cinema is now available for the first time on Blu-ray. Great. And what, what else about 7.1? What's the cool factor around 7.1? Why should anyone care? Okay. So 7.1, even though it's kind of two more than 5.1, um, it actually adds a whole different persona to the way we can perceive audio and the experience that you'll get while listening to 7.1. So even though at, you know, like in a, as a theater, for example, we kind of like have like a left wall, a right wall, and then a back left and a back right. So we now have four surround zones. So what happens now is that as a mixer and a content creator, I can move or I can slightly pull audio off the screen and make it touch the sides. So I'm almost creating like a 3D effect. So like 3D, we kind of like have a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. We have the same effect happening with audio. So now I can pull audio off the screen and pull it into the sides and not touch behind the audience, which in 5.1, I would always touch behind the audience. And now I can do that without doing that. And then we can also add some interesting things that we can pan audio from the screen uh, to behind the audience and not touch the sides um, or we can even individually move objects around the room and have far more definition than we could do before. Very cool. So does this 7-1 um, capabilities, does this add a level of complexity or, or freedom to the, 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 mix, the sound mixer's ability to work? So it actually expands their capability and what they can do. Um, so typically what would happen before in 5.1 is, is we do everything all of our, our effects and pre-dubs in a 5.1 stage um, and now what we're doing is with 7.1 is that we do all that instead so now we do all of our pre-mixes in 7.1 and we do all of our pre-dubs for 7.1 and at the end of the process then what we do is we typically spend half a day to a day on the final release where we actually fold down or down mix the 7.1 to 5.1 and that's typically like a half a day to a day per language release. So the complexity and what it adds is typically it's an extra day to the production cost. Okay, but it still gives them some for, some freedom. So there's a balance between it costs more to, it costs more because it takes an additional production day, but they're right. able to creatively do a lot more. With Correct. The sound. And then the great thing now is that before with seven point one because it was around since two thousand three in the home is that we were always going back to a 5.1 theatrical mix and then making some creative changes so it was never really the way the content creator the director wanted that particular um, you know piece of content to be presented so they're going back and making some changes whereas now we have the true intent so we can pass all the way through 